What's up fellow mages, Micah here. And in today's video, it's gonna be a Magic Legends video. We're gonna be talking about the week three state of the game notes that was posted by Steve Ricosi yesterday, that's April the 8th. Then we're also gonna be going over the update release notes and diving in what to expect with the game. And we'll have a little bit of gameplay at the end of the video just to dive in and have some fun with it. So looking first, we're gonna dive into the state of the game that was posted by Steve yesterday, and then we'll hop over to those update notes. So I'm gonna read this to you here give you my thoughts on it and then we'll hop over to those update notes as well so right here on the state of the game we can see it says hello planeswalkers your executive producer steve Ricosa here i'm back for another state of the game update letting you know about some of our upcoming changes and other ideas floating amongst the team as a result of all your fantastic feedback we've already made some near-term adjustments that we're very happy with and there's more to come we're at we're another week into our journey to full launch, and I have more updates, responses to feedback, information about our mid-April build, and a tease of our new event that starts this weekend, which will run for the next three weeks. So this has already started. Today's Friday the 9th, and that's going this weekend. And like you said, it's going to last the next three weeks. Last week, they also did an event, which was at their first event. It was Double Ether. And you were able to get Double Ether if you played anywhere. I think it actually started last Thursday and lasted throughout the weekend through Sunday. So for performance, last week I spoke about our team discovering some performance wins for Tazim and that we discovered even more opportunities to crank up performance in the game. So what he's talking about there is in last week, week two's state of the game address they actually talked about updates to the shadow technology and how things were running a lot smoother in tazim tazim was one of those areas was where a lot glitchier um, even if you were on a better computer a lot glitchier than if you were on like gavany or anywhere else so he also goes on to state that i'm pleased to report that the team has already spun up work on addressing these key issues throughout all of our environments and will continue to do so for several weeks while these fixes will not make it live immediately, the team is hard at work on them and I'll keep you posted in future blogs regarding our internal progress. So as we've seen with week two and week one state of the game, they're making very heavy changes to address a lot of the lag and issues that we've seen in game, issues with that shadow technology. Now we're seeing a lot of that fixed and we're gonna to continue to see that and it just keeps getting better. I think the team is doing a really good job at Perfect World Games in making changes as they get feedback from the forums and the community. So tutorialization work. We've heard everyone's desire to get into the meat of Magic Legends more quickly, and we have a multi-tiered approach. In the very near term, we'll be reducing the breadth of the overall progression missions in Tazim, while also removing the requirement to fast travel back up to Briarthorn Glade to turn in your missions. These fixes will help new players get into the game more quickly, filling loadouts with equipment and artifact drops, and building up spell libraries with the recently doubled spell drop rate. So that's something we saw in week two, that right before the actual double ether weekend, they had upped, they had doubled the spell drop rate. And that was something that I found to be quite annoying is having to head back to Tazim or to Briar Thorn Glade to actually turn in missions to Nyssa. And so I think that's really good, especially for newer players getting in and onboarding. You know, the very first mission that you do in the game with Ral Zarek doesn't take that long. But once you get into Tazim and you're going through the missions for Nyssa, a lot of people, you know, were posting on Reddit and the forums wondering when would it be that they could invite somebody to play with them and which you couldn't invite anybody to play with you until you get your first missions done in the overworld. And so I think in implementing these changes to make that shorter in Tazim to get friends on quicker is going to help people to really want to progress in the game. Battle pass progression really quickly here, and they might talk about it, but one of the things they did, and this was in week two's state of the game, is that they allowed the Demir Assassin class to be opened at level 50 of the free battle pass track, which was a really good move. A lot of people were upset that 
initially you had to pay to get that class, but now it's available on both pay to progress as well as in the free track. So for paddle bass progression, there's been some concern with battle pass missions either not being available or not completing. And while we're rapidly moving to fix these specific missions, it does mean that some plane walkers are missing the opportunity to earn XP. In addition to the huge grant of XP we delivered last week, we will also be running battle pass double XP weekends from time to time while constantly evaluating the overall duration to hit the max level of the pass. We want to make sure the battle pass experience is as clear, fun, and rewarding as possible. Now, this is something that was really big when you couldn't complete those missions and if you were somebody doing daily grinds unfortunately i couldn't i didn't have the time to but if you were somebody doing those daily grinds and weren't able to turn in those missions it felt like you were being held behind on the battle pass now perfect world games made up for that and last week they gave i believe it was like seven weeks worth of experience progressing you through or maybe it's two weeks worth of experience progressing you through though those beginner missions in the battle pass beginning missions there so they did very good in that and i think implementing some double experience weekends will be excellent to see i mean we've seen this in other games in the past i think it'll be a good welcome thing with the community currency caps we've heard a lot of feedback about the presence of various currency caps with some understanding as to why they exist but many ultimately having concerns about the cap level Currency caps allow us to make sure the economy doesn't get too out of whack if we end up over rewarding somewhere while we still get to provide solid numerical rewards without needing to worry about them being too over the top. That being said, we are hearing your feedback and are evaluating some ways to reduce the pinch and provide some options for players that want to engage more deeply than the current currency caps allow. So opening up more options. Now the mid-April date, this is something they mentioned last week in week two. They kind of glossed over it. So hopefully we can find out more about it. I've been talking about the mid-April update for some time and we're getting close to when it'll go live. You should expect to see a pretty large set of patch notes as over 450 bugs have been resolved so far, along with the popular request of removing player to player collision in the game. On top of that, we have some of our very initial performance work going live, which won't make the biggest impact, but should provide some help on these early maps. As I said above, the team is actively hard at work hitting the maps in the game, and we're fully engaged on providing a more solid overall play experience. Beyond performance fixes in this update, we also want to help make building out your spell library more efficient by now including the full 12 spell starter deck for every launch class you unlock. This means if you unlock a class through the realm or the store, that full starter deck will be added to your library. Of course, many people have already unlocked classes and will also be retroactively adding those spells to your library at the same time. We want to make sure everyone can really get into the thick of deck building and explore their own play style with the game. We've also got some late breaking feedback. Let's go ahead and cover that. And then we'll go ahead and dive into those update notes from this morning. They had a two and a half hour patch. We'll talk about what those were. So we've seen some feedback coming in recently on the following items. And I wanted to at least briefly touch on them this week, says Steve. Multiplayer missions ending and losing out on drop loot if the reward chest is open hastily. We will be taking a look at potential solutions for this because we definitely want everyone to grab their hard earned loot before being pulled out of the mission ordeal instances. Now really quick, that's something I was very frustrated with in game is that right before that was open, I would see like some amazing drops or potentially amazing drops and I would go to pick them up and I would get jerked out of the game, right? So that'll be something awesome to see if they can get that patch. AFK player farming rewards. Now this has been big talk here on YouTube. I'm sure you've seen people giving out these AFK farming guides. And so it's something to be aware of that they are not okay with this. So Steve goes on to state that our engine has built in AFK penalty tech 
And since this issue is coming up, we'll start spinning it up. It will take a little time for us to get the values correct for each mission, but getting this online is something we'll work on. So they're already putting in penalties for that. Mission queue notifications. We've heard that the public match taking too long notice is obtrusive in the UI and people would like the option to simply keep waiting while they do other content. We'll evaluate the ability to make these changes. There are also reports that when a queue pops, users are stuck in place until everyone accepts or declines. This is an ideal behavior and we'll look into it as well. And then overworld reliquary audio ping. There's some sentiment within the community that they'd like to turn off the reliquary ping in the overworld and simply use the radar on the mini map. We'll evaluate this for the future update. Steve goes on to state that once again, your feedback has been absolutely invaluable to refining magic legends. And I look forward to getting even more of it as we work our way towards full launch together. It's been incredible seeing all of you exploring the multiverse every day. And I look forward to seeing you this weekend with the release of two new events. The first event is a double red planar mana weekend. This will be good for your building and going and grabbing that mana meaning any source that gives you red planar mana will be doubled from this Thursday through Monday morning. The second event is called Mana Rig Mayhem and focuses on the mana rig going haywire and requiring a group of planeswalkers to shut it down. The event will start this Thursday, then run for 21 days. And if you participate in this event for 14 of those 21 days, you'll earn the brand new Mythic Sorcery spell, Unstable Beam, along with some spell infusers for that spell and other currency rewards. It's a fun event with an awesome reward and I'm hyped for the community to quell the mayhem. I thank you again for reading and I'll see you in the multiverse. Steve Ricosa, executive producer for Magic Legends. So, so that announcement right there, a lot of great updates first off from the team. I, I love what we're seeing out of Perfect World Games. But then for Steve to go in and state that they've got this event, and if you participate 14 out of 21 days, you're going to be able to unlock these special spells and currencies. I think it's a great way to make sure people stay on the game and keep coming back despite the bug issues. Again, this being open beta, we know what it is. It's awesome, I think, to see the responsiveness out of the team coming in here and fixing these bugs. Now to dive into the update notes. First, we're going to start with general. General. Mana Rig Mayhem event is live as of April 8th. You can access this event from either the guide under events or in the Sanctum. And we'll check that here out here in just a moment. Visit your realm to collect the event reward. Fixed an issue where region reputation rewards were scaling with difficulties. Reduce the overall amount of time it takes to finish the tutorial zone. Fixed an issue where planar mana, planar mana reset sometimes would reset on Monday and not Tuesday. Content for Gaviny, Gaviny Story 1, Curse of the Cruciborg, fixed an issue where enemies would continue to spawn from an unreachable area. Werewolf health increased. During the amulet step, creatures become unattackable. Thankfully, I did not have any of those issues. Tazim on Tazim's Overworld. Interstitial quests have been shortened to quicken new player progress. Objective requirements have been lowered and traversal requirements have been lowered. On Teleria, Teleria Overworld, skir for skirmishes and invasive experiment, they fixed an issue that prevented empowered Homer at Juggernaut from spawning after other Planeswalkers completed the skirmish the first time. For the systems, um, in general here, they fixed an issue where Planeswalkers were receiving heals after being defeated, fixed an issue where tokens and spells cast from equipment and artifacts were scaling incorrectly. Under artifacts on Draconic Flux, Draconic Flux, they fixed an issue where the 6-6 six, six Red Dragon created could become permanent if the Planeswalker was defeated while it was landing. That's a crazy glitch. I didn't get defeated at all while I had my 6-6 six, six out, but that would have been dope if I saw that. Um, for classes, the Demir Assassin class, under they did 
Uh, Dark Reverberation's ultimate secondary ability, 40 Blinks, has been buffed to accommodate the impact of recent recharge time changes. The clone attacks from the ability now deal an additional 12% damage each as well. And under Equipment for Pathfinder's Ring, Equipment Adaptive Mod has been rebalanced to reflect the ability of the trigger while still allowing for burst of effectiveness. The created Green Elf Archer token now lasts for 10 seconds from 20 seconds. Under the Battle Pass, Earn Planar Mana, Battle Pass Daily has been changed to defeat champions or elites to address an issue where Planeswalkers were unable to earn Planar Mana for the Daily after hitting the weekly cap. For the client's side, they fixed an issue that could potentially crash the client, fix several memory leaks throughout the client to improve client performance. Um, under net graph, they reduce the amount of client frame time that was randomly being included in display ping time. Reported ping should be more stable and closer to actual network latency, but will still include some client frame processing time, especially when running at low FPS. Under known issues right now as well, they have on the board that healing floaters are not working and planar mana reset won't sync properly until next reset. So those are the changes that we have and the notes that we have for the state of the game for week three. And so as we're diving in and we're heading in towards week four, we can expect that more things are going to come up. But what's really cool to see if you look at the update notes, which I will include links to all of this down below in the description. But if you look at the updates from this week to last week to the week before, you just see that list getting smaller and smaller. And it's great to see because the team is so diligently going out there and making changes. Now, I've noticed a lot of grammatical issues still within the game but those aren't the biggest things that are being you know affecting planeswalkers and us mages that want to be out there playing the game so let's go ahead and dive into the game let's check out how you can access the mana the rig mayhem event and we'll dive in and get some gameplay footage
right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope that you found this helpful. Let me know what your thoughts are on the updates and the state of the game down in the comments below. And now I know my gameplay is not the best. I'm getting better at playing on this. I'm definitely not used to the MMORPGs, especially on the action role playing game. So I am getting used to that, especially when my daily game is MTG Arena. So if you are jumping in and you are going to be completing on this mana rig, make sure you do do it 14 out of the days that it is around. That way you can get the special reward at the end as well. So if you got questions for me, though, drop them in the comments, comments about the video. I appreciate your feedback. And of course, if you want to see more videos on Magic Legends and MTG Arena, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I'll see you in another video.